Hello. Uh, a few people have asked us if we could do a quick tour of the boat uh, and uh, inside and out, but I wasn't going to bother until we decided, until we'd fitted a few things in there, sorted the bathroom out. I thought, well, why not? You know, it's uh, how we're living at the moment. It might be interesting for some people to see what we're doing. Uh, also, uh, Bre Fran's no kneading bread recipe has been requested, since as we mentioned it a few episodes ago. Uh, so if you're not interested in bread making and you don't want to see the boat tour then uh, please turn off now and watch the next episode when it comes up in a few days. Thank you. I'm just going to talk you through very briefly my bread making method. A couple of people have asked about it as we mentioned it on a previous vlog. I'm not a great cook but this is what I do and it makes fantastic bread for us and if you want to have a go there's no magic to it, there's no secrets just have a go and do it. So we, I don't have a lot of bread making equipment, a lot of cooking equipment. We only have one cast iron pan and a frying pan on this boat. So Where'd you get that from, Fran? Am I allowed to say? Yeah. This came from Ikea and nearly every meal that we've had has been cooked in this cast iron pan. On the stove, on the hob, absolutely brilliant and um, I didn't quite manage to get the bread baking in it on the stove. I'm still having to bake in the oven, but work in progress, so hey-ho. So, um, one of the things to remember about bread making is that you must have strong flour, which is bread making flour. Whether you use white or wholemeal is up to you. This is white, but it has to be strong flour. It's something to do with the gluten and technical stuff. So I'm going to use about one and a half mugs that was one there we go uh, i don't normally measure anything out so this is i just bung it all in the pan about one and a half mugs of strong bread flour in the pan um into that i'm adding one teaspoon of yeast this is the second important thing i use easy blend yeast it doesn't need to be mixed up with wool water and salt and sugar you just put it straight into flour so it's easy mix yeast strong bread flour so a teaspoon of yeast into one side of the flour um, we are not big salt users so we only use about half a teaspoon of salt for our bread which doesn't want to come out of here for some reason sorry Okay, you mustn't mix the salt directly with the yeast, so I'll put that in the other side of the pan, along with, I don't know how you measure this, that much olive oil. A glug. A glug. It's not critical, you can use butter, you can use margarine, it's just some fat to soften the dough. So, so why are we doing this, Fran? What's, what's the important aspect about this bread making? There's no kneading. This won't make super soft, springy, mother's type, bright type bread. Um, but there's no kneading, no work to it. It's so easy. And we start this off in the evening. This is now about nine o'clock. I'll start this off, I'll just leave it overnight. When I wake up in the morning, whoever's making the coffee, we'll just shape this. We'll show you this in the morning. Which will be you tomorrow. Pop it. <laughs> pop it in the oven and you have fresh bread for breakfast. It's just the easiest thing. No shooting out to the supermarket. So I have my flour, my salt, my yeast, oil. Just give it a stir. And then you need enough water just to make it into a really sloppy dough. Um, Mr. Cameraman, you need to get a come in to this. This is making enough just for probably two of us. It's a very, very small loaf and it would be enough just for the day for us. So I'm just probably better off with the wooden spoon than the metal one, to be honest. Don't want to damage my new pan. Um, so I'm now down to just over half a mug of, of water, just water. And this is going to make a really sloppy dough. In fact, I've overdone this. Am I going to have to do this again or do I just add more flour? What you sloppy. want 
Do you want to start well, it again? It doesn't matter really because people need to know. It does, the, the, the volumes are not critical. When I make this, the volumes are really not critical. But what you're aiming at is like a really thick paste at this stage. It's not a dough that you would need. So I'm now probably talking about two cups two of flour. big mugs of flour. That's looking about right. So essentially, if it's too sloppy, just add a bit more flour. Yeah, and if it's too thick, add a bit more water. But this is actually, this is really good. I don't know, can you see that? Yeah. You're just looking for like a really thick paste. Not something that you'd feel comfortable sticking your fingers into and kneading. <laughs> it's too wet and too sticky. And at that stage, once it's all mixed, I'm going to scrape it off of this wooden spoon. Um, normal bread making recipes would have you now kneading this for 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and the kneading process is quite difficult. Um, but that's fine, we will leave it at that. If you want to, at this stage, you can add cheese and onion, or olives, sun-dried tomatoes, herbs. We used to sell bread at markets, um, and I would make it just like this and add maybe a quarter of a cup of olives to this, and some rosemary, um, sun-dried tomatoes and cheese, anything you fancy, add at this stage, about a half a cup of stuff. I'm not going to stick the lid on it. That's it. You can go to bed, forget about it, and then in the morning we'll have a look and see what's happening and um, get this in the oven. Have lovely fresh bread for breakfast. Constanza is a 50 foot traditional style narrowboat, which means the stern, the back end there, is a, in a traditional style. Uh, you can get cruiser sterns which you can get several people on it in one go. This panel here with the name rubbed out was uh, that was done before we picked the boat up and that's going to we're going to repaint that red on both sides and put uh, for the short term graphics lettering on there of the name in, in vinyl lettering you know the stick on stuff. She's quite a nice looking boat and no wonder boatman Benjamin loved her so much. It's a, it's uh, yeah, we really like it. We love the colour, the blue is fantastic. Two solar panels, haven't got a clue how much goes in and what comes out. All I know is that we've never run out of electricity yet. Although we don't have a washing machine, we don't have a microwave, we don't have uh, all the mod cons that some modern boats have, we're quite happy to live a rustic existence on board. This is a side hatch, this opens up. Who should be in there? <laughs> and the doors open obviously as well, so in the summer that's going to be great to uh, watch the sun rise. Uh, you can see the wood on the top, we're collecting wood as we go along, typical water gypsies. Um, yeah, but that needs cutting up and storing. We've got a wood storage place underneath the bow. So this is the well deck. Uh, that's a chair we inherited with the boat and Franz bought some paint and she's going to do it up. This is going to have uh, like a canvas type cover on it. It's being made at the moment by Kinva Canopies. Uh, hopefully it's gonna, we're going to get it in a couple of weeks which is going to add essentially a, another room. You know, it's going to be dry in there and uh, we can, the dogs can go in there when we're cruising all being well. So yeah, it'll be good. So there she is, that's the outside. And coming inside, to the well deck. Careful, Archie, come on. Jess, careful. That's them in. Coming down the steps. Bed, you two? Yes, bed, bed. So there's a fire that we uh, redid the other day and Fran's weaving machine. Yeah, there's a dirty door on the fire and uh, Gwen Thomas on uh, YouTube has suggested we use spit and ash to clean the glass. So um, I'm going to give that a go when it's cool enough. This Fran's weaving machine. Uh, just had taken delivery a couple of days ago of this two-seater sofa 
uh, which turns into a bed, six foot bed, with these two footstools, which has, they have storage in as well, and so does the sofa. Which I forgot about that actually, friend, that there's the storage in the sofa as well. Yeah. Um, so that's brilliant. That was made in less than a week for us because uh, we were travelling around and we couldn't hang around by Fantastic Glen at uh, Elite Furnishings in Tamworth. So I'll put a link to that at the bottom of the uh, below, you know where. So we come through just two side windows. Uh, into the kitchen. We've got a settle there that we brought from the house and also a leaf table that we got from Ikea but it's too big and bulky that's going to have to go when we jiggle the kitchen around and sort it out. And into the kitchen which Boatman Benjamin put in which is more than adequate for us. We're going to have, we're going to change this a bit, jiggle it around, we're going to keep the cupboards, we're going to move the cooker back to where it used to be where the footstool is. We've got the footstool there so because we, we keep banging our head <laughs> on there as Franz just ele elegantly demonstrated. So yeah that's all going to change. We're going to have uh, some cupboards on this side um, but it's not top priority at the moment for us. We can more than adequately live. Going through here to the bedroom where the magic happens. We've got two portholes in here overhead storage and a four foot bed. Now when we first got the boat Fran was a bit concerned about the four foot bed because we come from a house with a king size bed but as it turns out uh, it's great isn't it? It's really I cozy. Love it. You love it it's, don't you? I've never slept so well. I've got a, a condition called restless leg syndrome which means my legs thrash about in the night and I was really panicking yeah. that I was going to have to be up sleeping on the sofa every night but sound asleep it's lovely i love being cozy in there so so fran sleeps closest to the wall and takes up three quarters of the bed oh uh, so we've got a diddy little wardrobe in here some clothes uh we've got a stereo system up there which is coming out it's in an odd place we don't need stereo systems like that anymore with bluetooth speakers uh crazy little corner cupboard under here we've got junk in so that will be removed all in the due course of time coming into the bathroom now this is the place that's given us headaches because we want to change it but we don't know what to change it to at the moment we've got a uh, little old sink there the shower is absolutely fantastic it's better than the shower the electric shower we've left at uh, home in Norfolk but the trouble is it'll drain a hot water tank in five minutes it's that good We've got a pump out toilet system uh, which we're going to take out the tank runs under the bulkhead there into this room there so we're going to take that out and we're probably going to go for a compost loo seeing as everybody who's got one raves about them so we're going to do a bit more research because it, they're very expensive and um, we want to get it right without having to spend yet more money on replacing it so and then we come into here which is a bit of a wasted space actually it's a two foot six wide storage area probably and we're keeping all our junk in here and shoes coats doggy dinner and that's the header tank for the heating system the fire's got a back boiler on it as you can see uh, there's two radiators in the place one in the bedroom one in the bathroom this is the electric control panel for isolating various uh, lights etc in the boat fans and then we go into here this is the engine room uh, and as you can see boatman Benjamin we've taken up the floor only because we want to reconfigure the uh, flooring in here it was perfectly adequate from some of it was getting a bit cracked though with my big feet treading on it so we're gonna this week with a bit of luck get some wood timber and uh, redeck it out. Uh, trouble is woodwork is not my forte and uh, it's going to take all my DIY skills I think. And we come up to there there's the starting bit and the accelerator lever if that's what it's called and another space for junk. 
So plenty to do, but uh, we've got all the time in the world and we're in no rush. I don't know if I'm going to be talking sensibly because it's first thing the next morning. Um, first thing I do is put the oven on to get that warmed up. As I said, I don't have lots of equipment, so I'm just using the grill pan to make the bread. Um, just coat that. I, you can coat this again with a bit of butter or something, but I just coat it with a little bit of oil. Once again, I haven't got a brush, so I use a little bit of bread paper to spread the oil. That will probably make a brilliant fire lighter now. I'll keep that aside, everything's reused. The dough, the next morning, depending upon the temperature of your boat, will look something like this. So it's risen up, but it's really soggy. You still don't really want to stick your hands in it. Um, so to avoid too much mess, I'm just going to still keep it in the pan and keep adding bits of flour until it forms what looks like it's going to, a dough that's going to hold its shape, if you can see this. Once it starts to get a little bit drier, I've just got to stick my fingers in. Try and get all the bits off of the edge of the pan. And just keep rolling it and kneading it in here. This might take you a few goes to get used to what this feels like and how much flour to add to it. But I would just say, don't stress over it. Every time I make it, it's different. Sometimes the dough is quite sloppy. Sometimes it's quite firm but I'm probably going to waste a bit of flour. I think I've put a little bit too much flour in this pan again. But um, if you can see this, it's quite stretchy, but it's not sticking to my fingers. That's just flour on my fingers. So once it's at that stage, I'll just make it into a dough. I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on here. Just knead it very, very lightly. And you can see that's not sticking to me, it's not sticking to the board. So this isn't going to make a perfect shaped loaf, don't expect, this is rustic, rustic bread making, don't expect fantastic loaves. So I guess you can see that is really sort of holding its shape. Um, so that will do, we'll stick it in the pan. The oven's been on for about five, maybe ten minutes. If you want to be artistic with it at this stage, you can slash it or you can put seeds on it. You can brush it with milk and put seeds, sunflower seeds, poppy seeds on the top. I often quite just quite often just put a little bit of flour across the top. That is it, and that's going in a hot oven. This is um, on about number seven. Now middle of the oven. And I would say about 25 minutes, 30 what, minutes, check it. What temperature would that be from the electric oven? 180, 200? Nearly full, I don't know. Take it to the top and take it back down. It needs to be hot. <laughs> crank it to number crank 11. It, crank it. Uh, but just, yeah, just almost top setting of the oven. Just take it down a little bit. Um, and then I'm going to leave that for 25 minutes and I'll check it and I'll show you what you're looking for next. And soon the boat's going to be full of the lovely aroma of fresh bread. I'm just going to check the bread now to see if it's um, nearly done or how it's going. You can see it's pretty rustic. <laughs> well, it looks like it's, bread and it smells like bread. So, fortunately, sometimes it sticks a little bit, this hasn't. The way to check if it's um, ready is to tap it on the bottom it should sound hollow and that isn't no, yeah. it's not ready, did it? you I don't know if you heard that on the camera but it's not ready so we'll give it another 10 minutes and then try again okay so we'll just um, check the bread again see if it's um, ready now after another probably 15 minutes in the oven actually this has had so I'll just give it another little tap that sounds a lot better so I'll just put that onto a rack to cool which is my grill pan don't have proper cooling racks but that's fine you just want to eat it now really but uh, yeah lovely nice crust on it well done 
So, uh, all in all, 30, 35 minutes, do you reckon, baking time? Yeah, I would say about 35 minutes, but it really depends how much dough you've got, how hot your oven is. You just need to learn to listen for that. Um, so I would say if it's not ready first time, each time give it 10 minutes.